Hi, my name is Liam Dowling. I'm a clinical nurse manager, grade two here in St. Michael's House. I actually started off as a butcher. I left school at 15, so then spoke to friends. I joined some voluntary groups. I did some work with people with disabilities, youth clubs, that sort of thing, and I just felt this is where I want to be. So I did a, I did a child care course in Bolali Street. That was a year mainly with children with physical disabilities. And then out of that, then I decided that I wanted to do nursing with people with disability. I didn't want to just go into hospital and make people better. I wanted to be involved in their life. The first course I did, I saw how people could live you know, with their families and from home. That's what took me into, into intellectual disability specific because I wanted to make a difference in not just in their health, in the care of their health, but also in the care of their, their social life and living. That's the difference. That's why I choose intellectual disability nursing. So um, I came to St Michael's House in 1998 and then I was there as a staff nurse for three years. And then in, in 2000, I set up a house specifically for people with challenging behaviour. I was a head of a unit in 2000. And then after 2000, I became a CNM too. A typical day, well, I suppose the real answer to that is there, there, there isn't one. We would have people who were quite uncontrollable epilepsy. We would have people who were quite prone to chest infections and, and sickness. There's days then when you mightn't see any of that at all. So you start off at the basics, getting them washed, dressed up in the morning. All of them go to day centre when they're well. Um, so a lot of days there will be people here because they're unwell or unable to go to work. Weekends are great because it, you're more hands-on with the lads and you get to do more things. Whereas Monday to Friday can be a bit routine. And yes, we do get very attached. You can't get very attached to the lads, yes. Um, but we're humans, dealing with humans. That's how I always, I always say that to people, you know. And people say, it's your job. Yes, it's our job. But there is a humanitarian aspect to it, you know. I mean, here are people that have a disability who can't tell you what they want. We get to know them and then we know, well, Mary likes this or John likes that. So Michael's House is, a, as I said, it's a, it's a very progressive organisation. Our, our philosophy is very much geared around O'Brien's five principles to practice. Recently, we have been... Um, looked into a quality system and it's the, it's the Council on Quality and Leadership was brought in, in from America so each client in St Michael's House would have their own individual plan. So you sit down with, with a key worker, a person that knows them the best and they would link in with their family, their friends, the postman, the milkman and they would draw up on the information they gather from that we would draw up a plan for that person for the year based on 23 outcomes. Some of my colleagues have actually turned out to be my best friends. I'm now here 10 years and I would say three or four of my best friends started off as work colleagues. I would say you'd have to have a sense of humour and um, you have to have a bit of fun, you have to be able to take a risk. So Michael's House is quite a large organisation, it has 200 plus um, residential houses. So we would have a lot of houses that would have nurses and social care workers and care staff. There still is perception out there regarding disability. The hard times are when you're out and you're in a restaurant, for example, and you go in and some of our people here are unable to chew. It's quite, quite a common thing and they can't swallow properly. So we have to get their food blended or liquidised. So you imagine going into a five star hotel and we do go into five star hotels and restaurants and all them places and we ask for the food to be liquidised and they look at you as if you've got two heads. That's hard because you're feeling for the person that you're with. But then the nice part is that you're actually educating them and you're teaching them and everyone will come in as a qualified nurse. They're a very progressive organisation and we've linked in with the Open Training College so we would actually send some of our care staff and social care workers on diploma degree courses in order for them to become qualified in social care. We also have links in with Trinity and DCU. If, if people are interested in, in, in the care profession what I would say is talk to people. Like, do not be afraid. I mean I was 24 before I realised what I wanted so I can't imagine what it must be like for someone who's 16 or 17. It's a very rewarding job. I hired an aeroplane a number of years ago. Air Aaron 51 seats on the plane, we filled 50 of them. 24 people with disability, all profound, six of them in wheelchairs, people who can't talk, and we flew down to Sligo. And the phone was fab. And since that, now people are going to Italy and France and Spain regularly. The average age of that group was 25. And, and it was their first flight. So you can really have fun. I also have an interest in moving people into community settings and educating the public and schools about people with disability. Because as much as we have moved forward in the last 10, 15 years, I still think we, um, there's a lot more to do.